Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to learn how we can connect our fast API to an SQL database. So for this SQL database, we're going to create it locally on a device in a .db file. Uh, but later on in the later videos, we'll learn how we can connect it to real databases online. All right, so let's begin. So for this process, we're going to use the SQL database in the .db file. So for that, I'll just create a new file here. First of all, for this tutorial, so I'll just name it something like main3.py. All right, and for this, you need to install a requirement which is called SQL model. So we'll just install that using pip, and that can be installed by pip install SQL model. All right, so after installing that requirement, we can start the coding process. So first of all, we're going to import SQL model from the SQL model library itself. So I'm going to import first of all SQL model, and then I'm going to import field for creating fields inside my model. After that, I'm going to import optional from the typing library and i'm going to import optional from that apart from that uh, i'm also going to import from context lib and we're going to import async context manager to run this is basically used for starting to running a command when the fast api is startup so we'll just see how it actually runs so i'll just uh, uh, import it for now which is imported by async context manager all right so now we'll move forward to defining our models for our database. So first of all, I can define the model or class as the class item. And this is going to be the type of SQL model where the table parameter is going to be true because this is eventually going to be a table inside our database. So next we can have the define the fields inside our model or class. So the first field I'm going to keep is obviously ID. And this is first of all optional because eventually this is going to be an auto incremental field. So optional, and then we can set it to int optional and then the default value for this is going to be field type for default equals to none and by setting it as primary key this is all this is going to be be a unique variable inside our table all right so let's move forward i can define another field something like name with a string then i can define price for as a float variable and I can also define is offer or any other variable you want. And I'll just set it as bool with the default value as false. All right. So moving forward, now we can set up our database files. So for that, we can first of all import from SQL model. We're going to import create engine and session. Now we're going to do what is first of all, I'm going to define my SQL SQLite file name, which is going to be database.db. Then we're going to define the SQLite URL, which is going to be sqlite semicolon slash 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 and that's the sqlite file name all right going forward now we can define the engine so engine is created by the create engine method of sql model and for that we're going to have the link of our sqlite database file and then echo equals to true all right moving forward now we can write a function which just create the db and tables so for create uh, for writing this function we can do what is execute the command in the sql model class and then we will access the meet metadata class from that and then we will use the create all function and create the all the databases inside the engine which we are creating above all right so moving forward now what we can do is first of all we can import from fast api then we can import the fast api from that and now we can create an instance of our app which is going to be app equals to fast api now moving forward now what we can do is now we can set up a function which will run every time our uh, fast api is booted up so what we're going to do is first of all we're going to run the create db and tables function which we created here whenever our fast api boots up so for that we can use async context manager async async context manager and then we can define an async function which is referred to as lifespan and the argument for this is going to be the app which is the fast api app for this all right so Throughout the lifespan of this app, what we have, what happens on startup is we create the DB and tables, then we yield and on shutdown, we do not have any command. So we just leave it as it is. So this is what a lifespan function does along with async context manager. All right, moving forward, what we can do is now import another thing, which is import depends from fast API. And now we can move forward defining our routes for our application. So for the routes, I can first of all define app.post. So first of all, we're going to define the posts root. So for that, I'm going to define it on the slash items itself. And now I can define the function name, which is which can be something like 
create item and in the arguments i'm going to pass the item object all right going forward now we can refer to a session so with session of the engine we have connected before as session what we're going to do is session dot add item and then we're going to commit that using session dot commit after that we can refresh our session with the session dot refresh with the item and then we can return the item all right so this is how our post your post endpoint will run after that what we can do is we can actually first of all import list from typing library and after that we can also import select from the sql model library all right this is used for reading the database data so now i'm going to define the get endpoint of our items uh, of our items url so for this i'm going to do app.get slash items and the response model is going to be list of the item so the response will be returned in a list format of the item model so now i'm going to define the function for our endpoint and that's going to be read items and we can move forward with with session engine as session then we can have items equal to session dot execute and then we can execute this statement which is select item dot all so for this what we get is all the items in the section and then we're going to return these items and this will basically return all the items and we'll be able to see all the items so now let's test it out so i'm going to run this application using the uvicorn main 3 semicolon app reload and let's test it out now all right so i'm on my uh, 8000 port and now i'll just go to the docs to get my swagger gui and in the swagger ui you can see two endpoints which are get and post so first of all we're going to post it so as you can see we do not have a database we did not have a database here so if i hit a post request i should be able to build a database now so let's try to hit a post request i'll click on try it out and for now i'll just hit it as it is all right guys so as you can see after hitting the post request i've got a 200 code right here which means everything is all right and the response body is just the item object so if i try to fetch the get items url now i should be able to see yeah so i can see my all the items which is just a single item right now and now if i move forward by again posting to this url i should get an error probably because yeah internal server error because i am trying to push something again on the id zero which is a unique value and for this i also get the error unique constant field item dot id so if i change the id now to one or something else and then execute the statement now i, I see that i the function has executed that and if i again use the get parameter get request i see two objects now inside my database so that's how you can handle sql queries and database with fast api and so guys that's it for the video and thanks for watching